Look at this. He's rubbish, really. <laughs> He's not rubbish, that's not fair. I had two of these when I was a kid, yeah, again, but I didn't have this one. Um, and they're not brilliant, I have to say. And I had the greatest trouble, even at my best, when I was about 14, when I'd got my model making to its height, which isn't saying much, but anyway, I still couldn't get them to look realistic. Um, and uh, I think that's a problem with armour in particular, but uh, the detail isn't magnificent. The, the breakdown of parts really leaves a lot to be desired and so on. I haven't opened this chap yet, so perhaps I'm wrong. But I tell you what, one thing that horrifies me already, those weird fleur-de-lis things painted over the surface with no respect for the detail. That's the kind of thing that, <coughs> as a fan of armour, gives me chills. Anyway, I have a plan for this guy. So, we'll see how it goes. Maybe with the plan, excuse me, um, he might start to look better. What I do like, the kind of boldness of the parts. They are big. <laughs> and there aren't many of them. Which is a bit weird, because some detail... Can you just see there? We'll see it later. The chain, not chain mail, the mail. There's no other type. Um, I mean, crikey at this scale, it could have been better. But they are old, and they are fun. And it's going to present a lot of challenges. And in the end, if everything works out nicely, you know, it could be worth the bother. Now, one of the big problems is heads. So many times in models and things, you get these... I mean, look at that bland mm, head. Heroes bother me, particularly in films, um, because they're always portrayed clean cut, squeaky clean, whiter than white, purer than pure, all of that kind of thing. Uh, think about how Luke Skywalker looks today. That's more my kind of hero. Anyway, so we get one of these, and I've gone for that. Uh, what I've done is I've put a big dollop of um, milliput on the back of the guy's head. That way I get the right proportions and a bit of the fixing that goes into the body. And I've done a rough thing. And you're thinking, my goodness, that looks ugly. That's because I want him to look really ugly. In fact, I kind of want him to look like the undead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, technically he's got to fit into that helmet, but I might not put the helmet on. Uh, but there we go with an idea of the size. It's compromised a little, as you can see, by the the fixing pin holes. But, with a bit of a squeeze, there we go. He's going to get a, another thin layer of milliput over the top and a bit more sculpting. But I, I, I want this to look deeply gothic and disturbing not squeaky clean. So one of these goes under all kinds of uh, different names. Names are very fluid in the armour world. People say they're not, but uh, they really are. Because in general Bits of armour were named largely by the Victorians um, and armourers and armour wearers in the Middle Ages used um, far broader brushstroke terms in terms that the Victorians didn't like at times. Anyway, um, this could be called a Burgoynet, which comes from a Burgundian salad or salad or many other pronunciations. Uh, anyway, it's one of these. Um, they are big, they are rather heavy, um, and they're moderately practical. There are plenty of helmets better, but uh, I'll take bits of it apart. Looking at it at this angle, you can see that very large kind of facial block, which is just strapped around. 
and there it is without the the front bit which is rooted in uh, what they call her um, I've completely forgotten Bevoir or Beaver um, and you can see it has these cheek pieces which are hinged so really it would like that piece on to hold it together the model actually the cheek pieces come together at the front and would be buckled or clipped so there's a slight difference there but that is what one of those looks like this is what we're sort of interpreting so there we are I'm supposed to be clearing up the kitchen um, loading the dishwasher and wiping everything down so now's the perfect time to look at my ugly head uh, I'm relatively I'm really quite pleased with it because it's ugly the main thing that I'm pleased with is I've actually allowed for shrinkage so now the little head falls out quite easily um, that's what happens with these kind of almost papier-mâché things as the water dries out you end up with things contracting which I'd planned for because his neck's got to fit onto his body and at the same time his face has got to come out the forefront of the helmet and the cat wants out but this has just about worked out I'm not worried if the helmet comes down low over his eyes because that will give him a rather a rather miserable look so all in all a little bit of shrinkage has been factored in and has worked out just fine I've flattened his lips though he looks a bit I don't know I don't know alien so let's make a start um, here's the instructions big bold clear all very nice um, start with the legs bizarrely what I'm going to do is actually just build the individual sections largely so leg one and leg two arm one and arm two um, and then get on with the painting so I'm painting the sections as one so that I can um, see how the different bits sort of run together rather than having to sort out joins afterwards or make a mess with the glue I think it's a good idea uh, and I've sprayed everything matte black we'll talk about that shortly I always love a bit of behind the scenes stuff no idea what all that means but there we are inside his breastplate a load of numbers anyway here's the arms the inside of the arm and the outside um, It'd be more fun if they made these um, relating more to the parts of the armour itself. But anyway, obviously you glue one onto the other and you get that. Uh, they're a straightforward thing. All fits okay on the whole. Tiny bit gappy. Uh, armour often is. And then the breastplate sits on a larger piece, the, the back plate. Uh, includes the lower sort of skirt the fold of lames so there you have it in kind of profile and you can see the breastplate has just been attached and then you get the back which uh, it's well apart from the fact he's rocking about a bit it's all very good it's all worked out nicely um, and you can just see that there we go. There we are. That's the front of the fold of lames, so to speak. No longer really such a thing. It's uh, it's more like just legs. Earlier, suits of armour had this kind of skirt that came down that allowed you to flex and sit on a horse and all of that kind of thing. But that's gone in this type. Here he is so far. Um, there, I've obviously I've attached him to the back um, part of the head that you get in the model and that had a D-shaped um, sort of uh, projection that fits into the breast and back plate the equivalent of the torso I've chopped that off because everything first of all has shrunk nicely 
so his face is going to appear through the helmet quite nicely. Secondly, um, when I was just checking everything fitted, he looked quite mm, amusing, shall we say? And I'm thinking of having him without his helmet on, which means I've now got to deal with the shrinkage. So he's going to have to have a hairdo. That's the next step. His mouth's gone a bit funny. The contraction has pulled his mouth open. May have to deal with that. Online and in books, some armour of this period is of a dark red brown. Um, it looks as if, from what I've seen, it's got a thick lacquer on it. Because I've worked with suits of armour as well um, in conservation and so on. I'm not 100% sure if they actually browned it or if it was a result of the lacquer. But anyway, it looks quite good, and particularly with a bit of gold on it, it looks very good. So I've decided to go for that, because the black just looked a bit absolute. So at this point, all's well. I think it's time to put that leg on. And unfortunately, it's not a brilliant fit. So what I'm going to do is glue it now, and then show you the gaps. By the way, I'm back in the kitchen, and that churning sound is the dishwasher, which I've just, you know, I've filled and put on and cleaned the surfaces, so I, it's time I did some model making. Here he is with a bit of detail paintwork, uh, and some extra leg and both arms, and I've just smudged some gold. It's not technically it's not really gold but a kind of gold into the grooves a little bit untidy needs a bit of clearing up but so the battery ran out anyway uh, so the c sort of gold color it might actually be bronze um, is working well with the dark brown so that's good and what I'll eventually do is highlight some of the uh, bronze with some decent gold paint just to lift that colour a little so you get contrasting shades um, so quickly outside to the um, world of power cables uh, what an incredibly misty morning it's very early and uh, atmospheric I'm just trying to get an idea if his proportions are working put his helmet on his hand by the way and here is our grim chum strangely lit because things are just absolutely dismal out there uh, <laughs> yeah there's been some developments um, and I can't get the camera I've got it on a tripod for once and what murderous madness is that well I put extra hair on him, or at least the first stage of extra hair. And they've ended up looking like tentacles or something. Um, and it was a different coloured uh, stuff. So he's now got white hair and green hair. And I've also put, I haven't got anything to point with, and my hands are uh, covered in kind of clay. Here we go. This is all very interesting, isn't it? Don't think so. And I've added, just around his neck there, what appears to be a rough, but it's going to be a chain mail collar called a standard. But one that's been knocked about a bit, and they lose integrity and roll over. You can, uh, uh, I speak from experience, let's put it that way. And then I've sealed it all up with yacht glue. Because that's all I've got. Uh, it's come out very well. So, from my initial doubts about the whole process things are now improving somewhat and I tell you what I don't know if I'm pleased with this or not but he used to look like the hound no he doesn't I didn't want him to look like the hound I didn't want it to look like I wanted him to look like the hound if you see what I mean but now he doesn't and I kinda miss him anyway a few more details to do on this character and then we'll start tidying up the paintwork It's funny, the facial recognition thing doesn't recognise this as a face. <laughs> Whatever.
Did you notice what I said there when we were outside in the fog? I said he looks quite good. He does, doesn't he? Uh, and that's no credit to my head. This is actually a very well proportioned, rather well made model. Its drawbacks are that almost every piece is a poor fit and there are gaps everywhere. Its positive is that he's actually got a bit of posture to him and taking the helmet off and putting it in one hand I think accidentally added. The other thing is, and I'm not really taking credit for this, it's not that my head is good, it's that my head is bad, if you get my gist. Because we're moving away from that squeaky clean hero thing. So he does look like a horrible bloke, rather than kind of some saintly fella. He looks like a bloke with some serious problems. Um, so that's working in its favour. But I think the most significant thing that is working in its favour is the fact that the head's turned sideways slightly. And that takes this posture and gives it a bit more movement. And that's all it took. So, uh, I'm surprised. I'm taken aback. And... I might have to buy another one. <laughs> another thing is, I've broken my golden rule to not mess about with the model because not only have I put the helmet in his hand and given him this ugly head, but I've taken his weapons away and given him a rather ungainly, rather comic book mace on a massive chain. So, I've gone too far. And just looking, uh, sort of vaguely at the whole situation, um, maybe I need to work a bit more on the chain, because I covered it in araldite, which has made it nice and solid, and I wanted it to look a bit grim and ghastly. But the araldite weirdly, is uh, more glossy than I'd expected. So, a little bit more paintwork there. I do like the drip on the end. I wonder what colour I could paint that. Like, it took a lot of work to get that drip. And now I've got it, I don't know what to do with it. You can see where I was going with that, can't you? It being, as I was saying, a bit gothic. don't usually like that kind of thing. And that means I may have opened up a whole new can of worms. I may be doing more with this figure than I expected. I may have to go back to him and do a little bit more work. Just for the fun of it. And he's kind of suggesting something of a diorama. So this might just be part one then. Work on the chain. Perhaps a little couple more layers of colour in his hair. And I've learnt a lesson. Ugly works. Which also means that it's quite good that I have bought another one of these. And I've got their version of the Red Knight. And two versions of the very old, uh, well, same age, but slightly older boxed versions of the Blue Knight. Only the Silver Knight to go, I believe, in this range. Um, and uh, the Red Knight is a, a very up-to-date um, edition, as this fellow was. Uh, the Blue Knights are old, second-hand. People have had them. Parts are missing, parts are glued together, or glued together incorrectly, I noticed. 
so liberties will have to be taken with those anyway which means we could have quite a little array of ugly nights I never thought I'd say that <laughs>